Price assets, or as you may still call them, price extensions, are an additional feature only available for search network text ads. Yes, it's got price in the name. So of course you can showcase your range of prices for any of your products and services within a particular campaign or ad group. But it can also act as an additional site link for your campaigns. We will show you what we mean as we walk through a setup of price assets. Of course, we're gonna show you where to find it, but most importantly, we wanna show you a few examples of how you may wanna use price assets for your accounts. In this fake account, I'm already in the campaign view, but we need to go to assets, which is over in your left-hand column. You can expand the section here, and there you see assets. Price extensions will be one of your asset options that live alongside any of your other assets you have set up within the account. Depending on how many you're using, could be in a different location. Ours is right here. As you can see in this example, we already have some living at the account level. Just like pretty much almost every ad asset or extension in your account, you can set up price extensions at the account, campaign, and ad group levels. Now, the deeper you go with those levels, the more priority it will get. And to show you what I mean, I'm gonna hop back and forth between this campaign view. Let's pretend this account is for a department store. Ignore the call campaign here. That was for a different video. But we see this account has different campaigns set up for different areas of their store. If we go back to our price assets, I'm clicking on the blue plus button to start creating a new asset. Now from the account level, we look at that as our safety net. If you don't have deeper level assets created, you have to understand that your account level assets can show for any campaign. So we tend to keep our account level assets more generic. So yes, you can attach existing assets you have already created, but we're gonna focus on new ones here. So go ahead, choose your language, there's the currency. Next, you can look at types. How are you gonna break out the actual price assets? So in this case, since we're pretending to be a department store, I may wanna call out product categories. And then you have to choose a price qualifier. You have the option to not include one, from, up to, and average. So I'll just choose from just to show you an example. For your first price asset, you will need a header. And here's where we see where the price qualifier comes in. Then add in the price. Next, you could specify units. In case of products like sunglasses, doesn't really apply. But for any service, industry, subscription, you can see how this can be pretty valuable. Next, you wanna add your description. And there's a few strategies you can use here. Free shipping easily fits within the 25 character limit. And sometimes we just copy and paste this to all our price assets if the store offers free shipping anyway. We understand it does not describe the product category or anything related to sunglasses at all. However, we're gonna use this space to add some sort of value message to it. Other things that you can test, Instead of free shipping, if that doesn't apply to you, maybe there's a sale going on. Maybe some sort of message like this in terms of, hey, we have all the top brands, we have the best product. All different things that you can test. But to keep moving on, next you will need a final URL. See how fast Google rejects this. And most likely you've seen the preview already, but there's just one example of a price asset. This is gonna get rejected, but I'm purposely gonna go and try to save it. Just so that red message pops up. You have to have at least three price assets. Google recommends that you have five or more, because as you start adding more, the user can keep scrolling to look at more of your price assets. So I'm not gonna have you watch me add two more. I'm just gonna do this really quick, jump ahead. I added two more price extensions for a hats category and a swimwear category. If we go back up here, notice on mobile, the third one already gets cut off, but the user will be able to scroll through and see them all. It's a good strategy to include your most important categories right in the beginning, because not everything is gonna show. If we look at desktop, Here's another example. We're just seeing one. User may have to click on more to look at all the other options you include. It's not how this looks all the time. Sometimes we do see multiple categories showing. It really depends on what Google displays at the moment. Now, a few rules when you're creating price assets. The final URL can be the same for every single price asset. If you're thinking why you might do this, now one example we've used for clients before is that they've had landing pages for specific sales or promos and all the sales are listed on this page. Well, we can use that landing page URL for all the different categories called out on that page, but still call out each of the categories. A user will click on one that means the most to them, but they'll still land on the same page, so that's totally okay. I'm gonna show you an example later of a pricing page. Subscribing for software, typically all the plans and pricing lives on one page, no matter what product tier the user may want. You already noticed, headers and descriptions are 25 characters each. Sometimes you may have to change things up to make them fit, but understand that your description does not show up all the time. That's completely up to Google on when and where it appears. And then also, if you're using prices that are too large, something like that, notice how Google can truncate it. It's not gonna show the whole price. 
That's purely just to make it fit within the spaces. Let's see how it looks for mobile. Yeah, pretty much the same thing. Let's go back there. Updated the price again. Now I'm just going to save it. Probably going to get a rejection message soon just because I was using fake URLs. Okay, but let's go back to the campaign view. We just set stuff up at the account level. That's just to cover some of our bases. I said it earlier, it's a safety net, but I was promoting sunglasses, hats, and swimwear at the account level. I have campaigns for bath, bedding, cookware, so my account level extensions currently right now, if this was launching, would cover all of these campaigns. And the account level price asset does not make sense for anything here. That's when you should go in at the campaign level and start creating different price assets. Let's look at cookware. You see up top, I'm in the cookware campaign. Let's go to price and then I'd want to create a new one. Maybe here I want to focus on brands. So I might choose one here. William Sonoma is a cookware brand. Cuisinart is another one. Start adding the prices here and so on and so on. And then save it to this particular campaign just so it's more specific to what we're targeting within the campaign. But then of course we have the ad group level. Let's say I'm just choosing frying pans. Then I'd want to go ahead, update my headers, descriptions, and of course, the final URLs to send people to those specific brands of frying pans instead of just overall cookware. Like all assets, if you're setting it up at the ad group level, it will ignore anything attached at the campaign or account level. If you're setting things up at the campaign level, it'll only ignore the account level. Higher priority, the deeper you go. So make your assets more specific. Not only it's going to have a better impact when a user is searching for your ads, they're looking for specific keywords that you're targeting, but to me the most important part is this final URL. Actually sending them to a page that's closely related to what they were searching for because the whole goal is to get them to buy something, right? So let's send them to the page that makes the most sense. To me this is an asset that's very important to get as specific as possible. Because if you're going to send users to a wrong page that doesn't relate to what they're searching for, price assets may potentially hurt your performance. Okay, but now you get the idea of what a price asset is, what it looks like, and what options you have to set it up and attach them to your text ads. Now let's go over some examples of how you may want to use these specific assets. I mentioned earlier I was going to talk about software. And this is one of the examples I mentioned where it's one landing page and all the pricing options are here. Intuit or QuickBooks are not our clients, but this is a great page to use for this video. So what do we see here for pricing? We see four product categories. They're going from cheapest to most expensive. Okay, we can work with this. Let's do the first example. So here's what I did based upon the landing page. The type I chose was product tiers, and I didn't do a qualifier because it's a set price. There's no up to a certain amount. It is what it is. So each of the four product categories, I just copied and pasted the header here, $15 per month. We go back to the landing page. We see here, it says per month. Now the big bold price that I've included in my price assets is only for three months. So I made sure in my description, I'm letting the user know it's just for the first three months. And then the URL is the same for all of them. So that could be one option we could save. Now with our clients, yes, we wanna make sure we have at least one set up, but we like to have multiple variants set up for testing. Yes, we test our assets out in addition to the actual text ads. So I will go back to these landing pages and see what other options can I choose? Well, I see one right off the bat. They have a free trial for 30 days. So if I go back to the asset, if I scroll down, I can find the other one. If I click edit, notice I can copy and edit it. So here we see there's the first category and then the other three. But what I might do in this one to create a new variant to test, call it down here, I might choose to say free trial let them know it's good for 30 days. I guess we need the same URL, paste it over here, but then what about the price? Well, it's free, so it should be zero. But since it's created in the order, I'll have to just click and drag this up to the top. So there we see in the preview, I'm putting the free trial first. It's all gonna go to the same page, but seeing free and zero dollars may be more eye-catching and give you a higher click-through rate than starting off with the price point. So you can save that one, and then you would be testing two price assets within the same campaign ad group, whichever level you choose. All right, that's software. Let's look at some other examples. Another price asset option we've tested in accounts has been recency. If something's new and you want to start selling more of it, put it first. Have it be the first thing a user sees. Not only are you driving awareness, you could be potentially driving traffic, but the goal is to start selling this new item. And as we've seen in both of these previews, the ones that you start with are going to have the most visibility. As you can see in the second asset that's included in this one, I'm calling out that tickets are going fast. This is the FOMO effect. Better act now before it's gone. Maybe test out leading off with that type of asset to push more urgency and try to get users to go to the page and buy something. 
Here's a framing example that we've tested out in several accounts. And I know you can laugh at me for the prices. I just tossed something in there. But let's just say maybe Nike is a better brand for your store. It's the most popular. You can run mediocre offers for it, like only select items, and people will still buy it. You may want to lead off with that one to show people that, yes, we do have your favorite brand. However, in the next one, you have a cheaper price with a better offer, including free shipping. It just sounds better. It looks better. Leading off with a slightly weaker deal makes this one look a lot better that people may be more enticed to click on it. This is totally different than the very first example I showed you when we were setting up the account level one, starting from the cheapest price to the most expensive. You may find out that works. You may need to rearrange your assets to test out a variant that includes popularity or maybe brand awareness over price. Between all the different types that we can use and which ones may be applicable to your business, as well as potentially price qualifiers, maybe you just want to call it a specific product. You can see how there are so many ways that you can create price assets and test them at a variety of levels within your account. So think about the ways that you can use price assets for your account. What levels would you want to test out the assets and what variants are you going to start coming up with to start testing at all the different levels to make it as specific as possible, which makes it easier for the user to find what they're looking for and buy something on your site. If you have any questions on price assets or how we may use them in your account, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.